is that we've moved to this weird place where now all criticism, all criticism is racism. And this has really been true for a while. I don't think that this is necessarily a new phenomenon, but I think that it's getting a lot more press and there are a lot more people that adhere to this idea that if you criticize anybody that is of a minority status, then the only possible explanation for that is not that you think that they're incorrect or you think that they're maybe even misguided, that you actually hate people of a minority if you criticize anybody of a minority. And this was on display earlier this week with Ilhan Omar. And of course, for those of you who may not remember, she's the Muslim representative in the house. She's the one that wears a hijab, very devout Muslim. And people have now misconstrued any criticism of her as racism and Islamophobia. For example, Ilhan Omar earlier dismissively referred to 9-11 as, quote, some people did something. And this is something that she has a record of doing. There was a clip that surfaced not long ago about her complaining to one of her professors. She says, you know, when this, I, I had a terrorism class in college and it was studying the history of terrorism. And whenever this professor would say Taliban or Al Qaeda or Boko Haram, there was this intensity and sort of this ominous tone that he took. And he didn't do the same with America or England or some of these other countries. So essentially what she was doing was she was equating America and equating England to groups like Boko Haram and Al Qaeda and Hamas, which is completely unconscionable, but she sees them somehow as moral equivalents to terrorist organizations. And let's also remember that when she's saying this, she was sort of justifying care, which by the way, she got her facts wrong on that. We actually discussed that, I think last week on the show, when she said this, that when she brought up that it that care was founded in the wake of 9/11 because there were people losing their civil rights that's not true it was founded back in the 90s way before 9/11 ever happened so she's got her facts wrong on that even though she used to work for care but nonetheless she sort of dismissively referred to 9/11 as just well some people did something writing off the deaths of nearly 3000 Americans and because she has a track record of doing this and because of the sort of the dismissive way that she was describing it, that's the reason that people took offense to it, and I think that they were right to do so. But in response to this, President Donald Trump actually put out a video to sort of showcase the dismissive nature of, of the way that she said it. And so here's the clip that the president actually tweeted out and pinned it on the top of his Twitter feed. Care was there it is. founded after 9-11. <laughs> Because they recognize that some people did something. So you have no idea right, right oh, now. Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> some people did something. Oh my goodness! There is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Some people did something. It just flew straight into it. So that's the clip, and as you can see, it's just Ilhan Omar saying some people did something using her own words, and then interspersing that with news clips of the event that she was describing. That's all it was. Uh, that's the entire video. You saw it. And so, despite this, the left completely flipped out about it and accused Trump of inciting violence against her and all this other crazy stuff saying that what Trump was doing there, and they weren't even moving to the point, there were a lot of people on the left saying that because Ilhan Omar received an increase in death threats after this, and, and she claims, and I don't know if this is true or not, I take everything that she says with a grain of salt, but she claims that it was specifically the video that they were referencing when these death threats were received. So here's one thing that we need to get out on the table before any of this happens, and it's insane that we even live in a society where I have to say this because no rational, peop uh, no rational person would believe that I advocate for this anyway. But of course, death threats to anybody for any reason are wrong. Obviously. 
these people, these nutcases that no matter how despicable what Ilhan Omar said was, and it was, threatening her life is not an appropriate response to that. However, the increase to death threats is not the fault of Donald Trump. And in this particular video, Donald Trump isn't even giving commentary. All he is doing is showing her speaking in her own words and interspersing that with news clips of the event to which she is referencing and showing a contrast there with the way that she dismissed it and the seriousness of the event itself. That's it. You don't even hear Donald Trump's voice. You don't even see him giving commentary. And yet, they're saying that this is what incited violence in some members of Congress, including, stupidly enough, yeah, you guessed it, it's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez even went a step further and said that he was intentionally citing violence. So not just that the president said something irresponsible and these death threats cropped up as a direct result of what he was doing, she also adds intent, saying that he directly was trying to bring up violence, that he was intentionally trying to get people to threaten Ilhan Omar, which is even a bridge further. But here's the thing. I'm not saying that the death threats in any way are justified or that they're okay. But if just Ilhan Omar's words and a video of that is what's inspiring the death threats, is incorrect a response to that as that is, isn't Ilhan Omar kind of inciting violence against herself? Isn't that what's actually happening here? Because you're saying the words are violence, the words, the actual speech is the problem. Well, if the speech is the problem and the only speech in the video is Ilhan Omar, isn't she the one inciting violence against herself? Again, I don't think she actually is inciting violence. I don't. Because I don't believe that words are violence. I don't believe that word is speech. She's not calling for violence, but neither is Donald Trump. And so we've got to get out of this idea that because people disagree or because people say something stupid and someone reacts to that, I would say appropriately when it comes to Donald Trump, by putting together a video showing the serious nature of what she was sort of dismissively talking about as some people doing something. That when you're looking at this, we have to get out of this mindset that speech alone is violence. Some people react incorrectly to speech, but just because a person acts incorrectly to speech does not make the speech itself the problem. Case in point, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and just about every, to my knowledge, everybody that is running for president on the Democrat side has said that Republicans are the reason that the globe is going to be a giant fireball in 12 years because of global warming or whatever. And they're saying that it's the Republicans that are causing all this. And when the world implodes, that something horrible is going to happen. In fact, a Bernie Sanders supporter tried to murder a large portion of Congress on a softball field. Are we saying that their rhetoric on things like global warming, that those are inciting of violence and that those words ought to be blamed for the actions of crazy people? No. I said that the day that it happened, I was angry. But the day that it happened, I still said and still had the good sense to say, but this isn't Bernie Sanders' fault. Even though we found out this guy was an actual Bernie Sanders supporter, and not just a supporter, a volunteer of his campaign, Bernie Sanders' speech is still not the problem. I think his speech is wrong. I think his ideas are bad. But I don't think that Bernie Sanders was literally calling for violence. And unless he did that, there's no crime. Unless he did that, there's no incitement of violence. There's no legal standard for that. I mean, Bernie Sanders can spout off whatever nonsense about the environment that he wants to. And it's still not violence. Incorrect, and I'll argue with him about it. But we still don't hold that to the standard of anything that a crazy person that happens to like the things that you say does is now attributed to you and you're the real cause of the problem. We don't do that in this country. And to suggest that we ought to do that in this country is inherently un-American. Because it strikes at the very core of our belief in freedom of speech. 
that speech is not violence and you ought to be able to say whatever you want. As long as you don't injure somebody in the process or call for somebody else to injure them in the process, unless violence actually follows, the speech itself ought not be prosecuted. That's a standard that we ought to hold to, and it's a value that we used to have. There used to be a sense of, especially amongst the left, even in the 60s, even then they would say, well, I may not like that people are saying things that I don't agree with, but I still think that the First Amendment is a good thing and that we do uphold this value of freedom of speech no matter what. Now the left has done the exact opposite. They've asked for a safe space to where they don't have to hear anything. And here's another thing, too, that I wanted to bring up. Ilhan Omar specifically said this, Since the president's tweet Friday evening, I have experienced an increase in direct threats on my life, many directly referencing or replying to the president's video. And yet, she's saying that the video itself is the problem, and that's violent, and that's a bridge too far, and because of that, the president has essentially overstepped the line, and that he's the cause of the death threats. But it seems as though Ilhan Omar forgets what she actually said about Donald Trump himself. Get your side of it? Do you think that President Obama is the same as President Trump? Absolutely not. That is silly to even think and equate the two. One is human, the other is... Human. Is it true that you just think that he's more polished than Trump? I mean, there you have it. Ilhan Omar is saying it's silly to even compare President Obama and President Trump. One is human, the other is not. So, apparently, Donald Trump playing a video of her own words interspersed with footage of a news event that was happening that she was referencing in the clip where she's talking about it, that's a bridge too far, that's inciting violence, and that needs to be removed immediately. Ilhan Omar referring to Donald Trump as not a human being. That's fine, and that's not inciting violence, and there's no way that anybody could construe that as something that would be justifying a violence. Now, again, she wasn't calling for violence in that clip, and as despicable as what she said was, still freedom of speech. She still has the right to say it. But she does not afford that same privilege, that same inhuman or inborn human right to other people. She thinks that speech that she doesn't agree with, well, that ought to be removed. <laughs> Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.